Okay, we're out here looking for material to make a spear with today. You can do a spear making video and we're in a good nice flat spot of ground here. We got a lot of small saplings growing. These look like buckeye tree saplings over here and there's a lot of nice straight stock ones here. All I'm looking for is a good straight section, about six foot long. Good afternoon, my name is Dave Canterbury with Wilner Southfitters Archery, and uh, we're here for just a small campfire chat. We're going to talk about some more of the exercise modules for the Pathfinder School, and we're going to talk about today how to make a spear. One of the exercises that I gave you the last time we talked was to go into your personal space and make yourself a spear. I had a couple guys ask me, well, how do I go about doing that? Well, we cut a nice five and a half, six foot semi-straight sapling here out of the woods. We showed that on video a few minutes ago. And I've stripped the bark off the first couple feet of it for right now. And I'm just gonna lay that in my fire and I don't want it to burn necessarily, but I want it to start getting black. And I'm gonna watch it as it dries out and blackens up. I'm gonna shave some more off of it and I'm gonna black it again. And that's how we're gonna harden the end of this spear. Right, while we're uh, hardening the tip of this spear, let's have a little discussion about spears real quick and <clears throat> the reason that's the first tool that you're making. As you have found your personal space, and you start to spend time in your personal space, you start to spend overnight time in your personal space, you're going to, especially if it's the first time you've been alone in the woods, you're gonna feel threatened by your surroundings, even if you have a campfire. We're not making this spear to go out and throw at an animal. That's not the purpose of this spear. In fact, that wasn't the purpose of most spears. Most spears were made for thrusting and jabbing and stabbing, not for throwing. Uh, back in the era of Cro-Magnum man and Neanderthal man, they would sit in the woods silent and still, and of course they already smelled like animals. So it was pretty easy for them to hide from the animals, and they waited a path somewhere where they knew an animal was gonna walk by from trailing and tracking that animal, or intercept them at a food source. And they would sit in the bushes very quiet, and an animal would walk within a few feet of them, and they'd reach out and thrust a spear into that animal and pull it out, chase it down until it died. So the purpose of this spear is more than just a spear. It's, it's going to be your personal security in the woods when you start out so that if an animal comes to investigate you in the middle of the night, you have something to kind of poke it out, drive it out of your camp with. At the same time, you have something that makes you feel more comfortable. It gives you a walking stick when you're walking through the woods. Once you harden the end of this, you can also use it for a digging stick. So it's a multi-purpose tool. And everything that we talk about in the Pathfinder system has to do with multi-purpose. One thing that you have to understand, and I hate to use an old military cliche, but the whole system of the Pathfinder training modules is built around learning to improvise, adapt, and overcome to your surroundings. I don't like to use the word survival. It's a good buzzword and it gets people's attention but it brings people thoughts of Rambo and things of that nature that aren't really true. And what we're trying to do is we're not really trying to teach survival. Survival is a byproduct of what we're trying to learn. What we're trying to learn is wilderness self-reliance. And one of the reasons that we teach the primitive skills that we teach is not so that you can never carry a modern item into the woods. And this is a big misconception that a lot of people have when it comes to primitive skills and doing things in a primitive manner. You have to understand that a primitive skill is meant to replace something you have in your kit or on your person or that you take with you into the woods that's made in a modern fashion. A ferrocene fire steel rod is probably one of the most reliable ways to start a fire that I know of. In fact, I started this fire today with a ferrocene rod. 
But the fact of the matter is, if I lose that fire CM rod, or I'm in the wilderness long enough to break it or drop it off something somewhere where I can't find it, or I've lost it in the dark and left it behind at a camp, I can start fire with the bow drill method. I can start fire with the hand drill method. And that's the purpose of learning primitive skills so that you can replace modern items if you don't have them at hand at the time. Now we've got our spear pretty well blackened up on the tip now. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our Tom Brown tracker knife or whatever knife you choose and we're going to go ahead and shave it down again and get it down just up here about oh six inches back from the tip and we're going to start shaving it down to a point point. and once we get to all bare wood again we're going to go ahead and put it back in our fire and start to harden it again. I want to show you something real quick while we're sitting here cooking our stick here and getting it all heated up. I'm going to Taking us up to the camera so you can get a close-up view of this, but this is a very good example of what I'm talking about by improvising with the environment. What this is, this is a stick that I picked up when I was picking up kindling. I'm going to try to hold it up here where you can see it good. Get it out of the shadow for you here. What this is, this is a weed stem from some field millet that some insect has laid eggs inside of. And it's swollen up, and now it's got a big bulbous protrusion in the middle of the stem. Well, as soon as I saw that, I grabbed it. And as soon as I saw that, what came to my mind was, man, you know what? That'd make a great improvised bobber for fishing. So I'm gonna take this home, and I'm gonna seal it, and I'm gonna cut it off to the right size, and when I do my primitive fishing video, I'm gonna use this in a video to catch fish. This is what I'm talking about by improvising and using your surroundings and your environment to overcome a situation that in some people's eyes would be a survival situation. Okay, speaking in general terms here, we don't, uh, we don't want this wood to burn. So if you see it start to catch fire, brush it off, get the flames off of it, put it back down here. The reason that fire hardens your wood, just to kind of give you a simple explanation, I don't want to try to sound like Einstein here, because I'm not, but generally speaking, the more molecular density something has the harder it is and what you're doing with this wood when you stick it in the fire and heat it up is you're constricting the cells in the wood on a molecular level and you're making the wood more dense so the more dense it is the harder it is and that's what we're trying to do so we're just going to keep rotating this slow in our fire and heating it up slowly shaving it down to a point we get to the point we want we're going to heat it up again and then we're just going to shave small sanded areas off of it and it'll be what we want and you can take the rest of it down to the bare wood or not it's up to you decorate it make it your own get comfortable with it because you're going to use it a lot during the time you're studying the pathfinder system